Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Nope, Still Not Famous. This one is a little different than what I usually do because I'm not really sure if you guys can learn something from it because not everyone is as crazy as I am and just decides to quit their job. That's a risky move. I'm very happy I did it. I have absolutely no regrets. But as you can tell, I'm still not famous. And in this video, I just want to talk to you about what I learned from doing that. Last year, I had a very good career, one that was in my field. My degree is in forensic chemistry as you guys probably know. So this was a chemistry job, very good money for a 23 year old to be making. I wasn't happy from probably like February last year to June. Four months of being miserable, of sitting at my desk and thinking I could be doing so much more with my life if I wasn't stuck at a job that I hated. I made an entire video last July about why I quit my job. So if you wanna know more specifics of why I did that, follow that video right there, the link's below, and it just gives you a lot more information about why I actually quit my job. But that's not what this video is about because that's in the past. I did it and now this is what I've learned from it. And I hope that if you guys are thinking about following your passion full time, quitting your job and seeing where things go, I hope that maybe you can learn a little bit about what I have done in the last couple months or so. Last April was my CD release show and that was the biggest project I've ever done in my life because it involved merchandise and booking the venue and booking all the bands for it, getting my band to learn all the songs. I was filming a music video in the process. I was still recording the CD because that took about a year to actually create and produce. It was crazy crazy and hectic and annoying and I honestly don't know how I got through it. I honestly have no idea how I managed to pull everything off that I did. So when I finally decided to quit my job, everyone was very supportive, my mom, my friends, and everyone really believed that this was the right decision for me. I thought, I'm 24 years old, I have the whole rest of my life ahead of me to make money, I've got a great savings account, I'm gonna quit my job and put 100% of my efforts into being a famous musician about trying to have someone find me and sign me. So now, let's go into what I learned. The first thing is, damn, you have a lot of time on your hands. You keep thinking, I work nine to five, I have a full-time job, how am I ever supposed to get music recorded, edited, put on YouTube? How am I supposed to get things finished for Spotify or make a music video or play out shows that I want to or learn a set list? Well, when you don't have a nine to five, you have a lot of time to do all those things. Honestly, that first week, I was overwhelmed because where do I start? What I've realized is sometimes only having that chunk of time from five when you get out of work to, I don't know, 11 when you go to bed, sometimes you're a little bit more productive in those six hours because that's all you have. So when you have the entire day to do whatever you want, it's just a lot. So I got that Indie Bible and I talked about it in the Indie Bible video and that's pretty much what I did for the whole first month from like the middle of June to the middle of July. I just sat on my computer for eight hours. I'm serious, I got up and and I got on my computer at nine o'clock and I did not get off until five o'clock. I just submitted to every blogger, every radio station, every record label that was actually on that Indie Bible PDF. I submitted to all of them that I could with my sanity intact. And I got a lot done, I got a lot of responses. What I also did was submit my set list to local venues, local restaurants and pubs who needed music on the weekends because I never had enough time to craft my set list to what I wanted. I always felt rushed when I was playing a show, like what songs am I gonna do? I always messed up on stage because I never had enough time to practice them and get them perfect. And now, after all of this, I have a four hour set list of covers. That's something that I'm gonna be able to use and that was great to have enough time to practice. I also wrote a lot of songs and that time this book this Lexarian book that you can get on Threadless if you guys want to buy it I actually keep a tally of how many songs I write per year as you can see I did not write a lot back in the past I was in school I had a full-time job but then 2019 full completed songs that I'm proud of and I will play I write a lot of songs for myself that I don't actually let anyone else hear but in 2019 I wrote 21 songs that are either on a new record coming up or I've put on YouTube already and these songs from 2019 I'm so proud of they include hit the ground mind the storm all the ones that I've made really big deals on my YouTube channel so if you guys haven't seen all my music videos go ahead so while I was dividing my time between trying to book shows learn songs for the shows use the indie Bible and get my music out there I just put out a new CD I submitted that EP to everywhere to every country that I could think of and then I just kind of sat back and waited for the results and saw okay is anything gonna happen I created record label care packages and I'm very proud of those and I was going to have a whole other video about how to submit your music to record labels because it's not just an email most of the time it's like a care package it's something that you got to send and they got to decide are we going to open it or are we just gonna throw it away it's all about catching someone's eye making the package
packaging really cool, making a nice little thank you note, like what do you put in it? So I'm gonna make a whole other video about record label care packages and tell you guys the ones that I submitted to. The biggest thing that I did with this time off is live streaming. I had so much free time that if it was one o'clock and I had my makeup done, I was filming a video, I just went on you now. I streamed for hours. I made so many friends, so many connections, and that is what inspired my UK tour actually. And I was getting all these glowing reviews from people in Australia and Germany and Ireland. So that's why I decided I'm just gonna start sending out emails emails and figuring out if I can travel somewhere and maybe get discovered sooner. So I sent out emails to a lot of the predominantly English speaking places, Ireland, UK, Australia. And then one day I got so many responses from the UK saying that these venues would like me to play that that's why I made the whole UK tour. So if it wasn't for me quitting my job, going on you now, earlier times in the day around 12 or one o'clock where it was time for people in the UK to get out of work, I may never have met these people and had the idea to go to the UK in my head. So you now and live streaming was great. And I think it's a great way to build up your fan base. And that's a lot of what I did during my free time. In the past, I've been really terrible about posting YouTube videos. I used to post back in 2008, one a month, and then it turned into one every six months, and then one every year. And that's why I haven't built up my fan base as much as I think I could have if I continued with it. So when I quit my job, I decided that's it. One video per week. I have no excuse anymore. Ever since I'm gonna say the middle of July, I have not deviated from one video per week. I have not missed a single one. Very happy about that. Overall, quitting my job was really beneficial because instead of seeing all the YouTube comments, Facebook comments, direct messages during my shift at work and thinking, okay, I gotta respond to them all during my lunch break or all after work, I was able to finally respond as they came in. I was able to make better connections and network easier. So a lot of great songs came out of this, a lot of great connections and a whole international tour. I mean, that's pretty dang good. I will say that I lost a lot of money. My savings account started up here and I told my mom, once it gets down to here, I have to get a job again. And she kept saying, well, you probably will never need to get a real job again because this is all gonna work out for you. Well, here I am. I had six months without a job. Six months of using my savings account to pay my rent, to pay my gas, to fly to the UK and book an Airbnb for a month. And yeah, I lost a lot of money, but like I said, you can always get more money. Not everyone in the world is lucky enough to have a degree, and I do. Music has always been the goal. The degree and the career have been plan B. I've never been a very career-oriented person. I didn't start this job back last year and think, I'm gonna get to the top. I'm gonna be the director of the labs. I'm gonna be the head honcho. So that's why no matter what, music will always be my passion. It'll always be my actual full-time job. Unfortunately, I'm not famous. I made great connections. I still am in contact with a couple of record labels. I networked for those six months. When I did come back to America, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do, if I was gonna get a full-time job, if I was gonna try to go back to the UK, if I was gonna go back to school, I had no idea. So I continued living off of my savings for one more month, and then January this year, I did get a part-time job because like I said, I didn't wanna go back to another nine to five right away because that was the whole point, I was miserable. I couldn't do music. And now with a part-time job, I make my bills, but I still have enough time to film a video, to edit it, to stream, to go to the recording studio. Taking this six month break of having a job, of having a responsibility and being a true adult, I got to work on everything about myself and I came out of it mentally way better. I realized that I like who I am and I'm happy with who I am and I don't need anyone else around me to validate me. So overall, this was just a great thing for me to do. I've always had this number in my head of when I'm 25, I have to get my shit together. I have to grow up. I have to actually focus on the career and put music in the background. I will always write music. I will always post music videos on YouTube. I will still probably go to the studio every couple weeks and release a new song and get it done professionally just for my benefit because I like being a musician. It's not gonna happen for everyone. You gotta be real. You gotta think about how many people wanna be famous and how many actually get to that level. So for me, taking six months off of work was what I had to do. If I didn't for once in my life focus solely on music 100%, I would always look back and think, well, what if? What if I had done things differently? What if I had just put all my attention into sending out my music to every place in the world that I can think of? And now that I have done that, I will never look back and think, 
I should have tried harder because I did everything I could do. I'm still doing everything I can do and I'm not completely giving up. I'm just being a little bit more realistic about everything in life and I needed to do this. I was so unhappy with my current situation. I couldn't live like that anymore. So I'm still not any better knowing what I'm trying to do for the rest of my life. I will never regret not trying hard enough to be a famous musician. I will never look back and think I should have quit that stupid job at 23. I should have lived my best life. Because I did that. I know not everyone is lucky enough to be able to quit their job and follow their dreams. I'm lucky in the way that I had savings. I had the opportunity to quit my job. I had a cheap enough rent where I could afford it. I had very supportive people in my life and I knew that I had a degree to go back on. If I decided that being a musician was not going to work for me, I still have a forensic chemistry degree and that will still hold on my resume. There's a six month gap that is not the best looking, but I've still gotten interviews and a part-time job with that six month gap. People don't really care, I guess, nowadays. And when I tell people the truth why I quit to tour England, because why the F not? I mean, who has that opportunity? They kind of understand. They, they don't really question it. So I don't regret what I did. I encourage everyone to do everything you can to be happy because life is too short to be unhappy for even a little bit. If you are not in the right place in your life, the right job, the right relationship, the right area, just get out, okay? As hard as you can, save up the money to get out of that state, to move out of that relationship that you don't wanna be a part of, to get a different job. You do not have to be stuck and you do not have to be unhappy. That's all I wanna say and I truly believe that we should just all do what we can to be happy. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you already don't. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've ever been in the same situation where you quit your job and you learned something for it. If any one of you have done that, I would love to interview and hear what your thoughts were and post it on my channel, figure out like if we did the same things, if it worked out for you more than it did for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you on the next episode and you guys have a great weekend. Stay happy.